know what a phone is. Hi, Amy. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? I'm fantastic. I am Hi. two hours in to our 32-hour hangout. I, how did I get so lucky to get you guys all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed? I I, actually, I'm not quite sure if this is luck or not luck, since you guys are going to be hilarious later. Yes, and yes. Right now, Yes, I'm sure there, there are other segments you can join in on when we're really loopy. Yeah, come in and <laughs> so poke I'll you with a stick. What's that? I'll come in and poke you with a stick and laugh. <laughs> as long as it's a soft-ended stick, we're okay. <laughs> Pamela. Hey, Amy. How are you? I'm well, virtual hugs. Do you have a mic? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we need a mic, my darling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have all the all the tech here. So, uh, Amy, why don't you tell our audience who you are and what you do, uh, maybe where sure. you're located? I am Amy Davis Roth. A lot of people know me as Surly Amy. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I write for the very popular blog, Skeptic.org. I'm also managing editor for a sister site called MadArtLab.com, which is about the intersection between art, science, geek culture, feminism. Uh, I also am the creator of a line of designer jewelry called Surly Ramics that encourages critical thinking, celebrates science, and is hugely influenced by astronomers and scientists in this awesome citizen science outreach community. And Pamela specifically has been a huge influence on my work. And I can give you a little backstory on that because I'm not even sure if Pamela knows this. I, I, I don't think I know. So the first time I'm, I met Amy, we'd exchanged some emails when Astronomy Cast was first getting started and Surly Ramix was first getting started at the yeah. same time, pretty much. And uh, she'd ask about doing some Astronomy Cast pendants, and Fraser and I, like, this is a strange person. <laughs> no. Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good. All right. So you are. You're very smart. This proves how intelligent Pamela Day is. She, right off the bat, knew that I was a strange but person. Then Amy and, and Johnny came up to me in Long Beach. I No, Pasadena. Pasadena. Yeah, yeah. Good memory. And I don't actually remember the pre-emailing you. I just remember that I'm going to sort of go stalk this person down and just say hello because I think she's so awesome. <laughs> But that's, I can give you a quick rundown of how that yeah. all came into play. When I first became an artist, I painted. And I painted primarily portraits of people and, and weird, weird sort of tattoo art inspired things because I grew up working in tattoo shops and, and nightclubs. And, and so I decided when I was really young I was going to open an art gallery. So I did. I opened an art gallery. I knew nothing about business. I knew pretty much nothing about art. I really didn't have any good ideas. I just decided I want to be an artist. So I started this business and it failed miserably. Oh, <laughs> I literally ended up bankrupt and I had no money. I had no car, nothing. And so I had to sort of start my life over. So I became a waitress and I was a cocktail waitress for a long time. Wow. And during this time, you know, I stopped making art. I was really depressed. But I thought, you know, I, I need to, like, learn about some things. I don't know. I, I don't have any good ideas. I don't have any, you know, concrete things to put my, you know, my efforts into. And so I decided out of the blue, I want to learn about physics. And it was sort of hilarious That's because awesome. I would tell the customers, I'm, I'm bringing over, you know, here's your drink. I've decided I want to learn about physics. And people would say, what kind of physics? And I'm like, I I don't know. And they're like, okay, that's really interesting. So what I did is I went to the local music and video store, because that's how my mind worked at the time, and I looked for some videos. I'm like, I'm going to learn about physics and science. So I got this video called What the Bleep Do We Know? Oh, I yeah. Don't, okay, so I don't, yeah, some of you may or may not be familiar with this video, but it is completely pseudoscientific nonsense okay it's this it's this video that pretends to be about physics but it's really about hokey I don't know weird spiritualism and how you can heal your body with water it's just very very wacky but at the same time I got this video and I and I watched it and I watched it with my husband who was my boyfriend at the time and I, I was like well this is really interesting wow all these things about molecules and water I'm fascinated so I got another video and it was by Brian Greene 
and it was the elegant universe yeah. and it was this fantastic it was an, it was made by Nova I, I believe put it out it was this really fascinating uh, explanation of string theory and all the possibilities and, and wonder of what could happen if there were multiple universes and and, I, and so I had these two videos and I, it was at a point in my life where I was like what is true Would, which one of these are accurate? And at the time, I wasn't really sure. I'm like, maybe both, right? So then what I did is I went online. And this was at a time when podcasting and uh, you know your radio shows online were first starting out. It was sort of yeah. like the baby, baby time of podcasting. And so I did a search just for science. And what came up for me was uh, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. There was a podcast at the time called Skepticality. There was uh, Astronomy Cast. And so those were the ones that I downloaded. And that is when I, and it was really funny actually, because The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, one of their episodes was about what the bleep do we know. And it was how I learned. I was like, oh, Johnny, who's my boyfriend, husband now, uh, I was like, Johnny, you're not going to believe this. That video was completely nonsense. But the one that we were, the other one made sense. And so I started listening to you guys. And so I did. I reached out both to. Uh, the Skeptic's Guide, I reached out to Rebecca Watson, and I did the same sort of weird stalkerish thing that I did to you, and I said, hey, you know, I'm this nobody, but I'm an artist. And I, should, I, guess, I guess I should also tie in the fact that at that time when I was a cocktail waitress, I started making jewelry, and, and after I started learning about science and astronomy and all, all the wonders in the world and all the wonders in the natural world, my art started to be about those topics. Yeah. And so I started wearing jewelry that had to do with science and it had to do with learning new things. Because I'm not a scientist, I'm not, I'm not you know, part of the higher you know, academic education crowd, but I'm fascinated by learning. And so I started making jewelry that had to do with these topics. So I did. I, I reached out to Rebecca and I'm like, hey, I think you're really neat. And I typed to her and I'm like, hey, um, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot to offer. Um, can I send you some jewelry? And she's like, totally. Send, I, I like robots. So I made her a robot and I actually sent a whole box of jewelry at the time because I had nothing to do with her website at the time. But I said, I said, here, you know, here's a bunch of jewelry. Give it away to all the girls that are doing science outreach because I think it's fantastic. And so at the same time, I, I was like, okay, let's go find Pamela. And luckily, you were uh, you were at Pasadena, and I think yeah. it was for some sort of a, a NASA. It was for the American Astronomical Society for the International Year of Astronomy back yeah. in, uh, I think that was 2009. Yep. Yeah. I missed that yeah. meeting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we went to that, and we were so nervous, and we felt so out of place. That's one of the interesting things about this outreach to different groups, and it's really great what you guys are doing, because for people like me that really don't know a lot about you know, the higher, the higher sciences and things like that, it can be very, very intimidating, and, and you can feel really stupid and out of place. And, and I remember feeling very intimidated when I went down there with Johnny, and I was so scared to go up and talk to you, but I was like, okay, let's go, let's go up there. And I had in my hand a, a little necklace, and it was kind of like my offering. It's like, this is all I really have. I, and I'm not it, a scientist. It's orange and red, and just said, <laughs> think on it. I, I still think. have it. It's one of my favorites, but it yeah. clashes with the shirt, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, it, it said, think. I remember that. It was one of the very first designs that I did, and so I, I walked up, and I, I was like, hi, we're, we're, uh, we're fans of uh, Astronomy Cast. And you're like, oh, you're fans! And you were so welcoming and so wonderful, and it, w it really made a huge difference in our life, and it, it really has inspired a lot of the giving that I continue to do with my jewelry because not only that day did I give that necklace to you but I went and handed out like five more just to random people that I didn't know that were volunteering that day and it, it was sort of the beginning of sort of what Surly Ramix has grown into and, and what I do with my art as outreach and I, uh, I, I, I give a lot of stuff away to try to inspire people and then the money that I do raise I try to use that uh, at least a portion of that money. I obviously have to, you know, eat and pay my yeah. rent. But I really take a large percentage of the money that I make selling art and give it back to the community, specifically for people like me, people like I used to be, and and women who aren't able to afford to go to certain events or to get involved in science. I try to pay the admission 
for people to go to science events, and I do a lot of other little donation type things and fundraising. But Pamela, you are a huge influence on that, and and you and Rebecca Watson being two really wonderful, like warm and open and caring people that welcomed me, a strange, weird little artist, into their world. You've done such a great thing, and. I, because of you, I've been able to turn around and give back to the community also. So and I, I have right to know, on. I, I've been so awed with all of the different ways you've reached out to all of our different groups over the years, from working with Phil Plate to raise money to uh, every year we do the Star Party uh, charity associated with Dragon Con and you've always been there, you've always been donating to the cause uh -huh. and then you've just been there helping all of us find ways to get our word out. So I'm, I'm currently wearing an astronomy cast surly that you made. And wearing a moon one. Yeah, I have the exact same one, almost <laughs> wore it and then realized, no, twinsies. I probably could have <laughs> had one for every two hours or three yeah, hours of the I, show, but yeah. I don't like traveling with them unless they're packaged well. <laughs> and, and yeah, the, the packaged well matters. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, Amy, I don't know how you come up with so many different designs. I've loved watching your art evolve over the years because you went from like these awesome uh, kind of modern art ones that just said things like think mm -hmm. um, to developing the, the very um, uh, I don't know, Elaborate. 70s era um, moon and sun design to you have all your wildlife and then lately you've started even doing constellations with, with yeah. Schwarzschke or I don't know how to say that Swarovski. word. Swarovski. Those. Yeah. All right. So those crystals. And I got one of those right here. So let's see if, if you can see it. Let's see. Been it's sort around. of hard to see but this is the Big Dipper. And the yep. Big Dipper is in Swarovski crystals. So you, and I do Andromeda, and I do a whole bunch of the Pegasus constellation. I do a whole bunch of different ones, and you can. You did uh, Orion. I did Orion, yeah. With the colors so, there for for Rigel and, and Beetlejuice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tried to be, you know, uh, spectrally accurate on those. Which, so, you know, we did a lot of research for the colors. So it was red shifting or blue shifting. I really tried. I put like the different stones in there. It's, it's been really fun. I mean, for me, this is all just you know a learning process, and, and that's how I come up with designs. I'll, something will spark my interest, and you know, I will just I'll just take that and I will investigate whatever topic it is while I'm making the art. So I, I'm really sort of at the bottom level of, of learning. I think of myself as a student of life at all times, and I think that's why I can come up with so many ideas because there's so there's so many things to get interested in. I mean, you guys were talking earlier. I mean, there's so many like uh, citizen science projects projects that you can do. You know, you can map craters, or you could you know do the gardening like you're talking about, which I started yeah. doing. I started learning about how to. You know, I live in an urban environment, so I, I've decided to do a lot of container planting. So, like, I've been learning how to grow corn in a, in a pot, so, you wow. know, and all this is fascinating. I don't know. I know nothing about corn. And, like, I, if you look out my window now, there's, like, corn stalks growing in a pot, and I'm so fascinated by it. I mean, all these things are so interesting. Like, it makes these little tassels at the top. I had no idea. And these little Muppet things grow off the side, and they're corn cobs, and they have hair. <laughs> they look like Muppets to me. I don't know. It's the greatest thing. I mean, there's so many things to get excited about. In the I, world. I've never heard a city person talk about <laughs> corn before. I've never seen corn grow. Yeah, it was bizarre. I'm like, there's little Muppet people. That's I don't think I've ever like. been that close to corn. Oh, oh, oh that's yeah. going to get fixed. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to make a corn necklace. I'm serious. Not, not the band people. Yeah and and yeah it wow okay um I I grew up in, broke in a small farming <laughs> town well not I grew up in Westford Massachusetts which at the time had a much smaller human population and a much larger cow and corn population and the street that I lived on backed up against old Fletcher farm and we'd go through the corn playing hide and go seek and uh so we grew up having to come out of the corn and then check ourselves for ticks and things like that. It was just ticks. <laughs> yeah, things that city people don't worry about. Um, <laughs> I got a tick once in Staten Island in my parking wow. lot playground. That that was a <laughs> that was a very determined tick. A very very determined tick. Um, but but yeah, what what I love though is this is another one of those examples of. 
you're taking the real world and finding ways to communicate it and you're working to get the accuracy and uh, I, I love I never know quite what's gonna come out because I'll see a tweet from you that says hey I need to know the accurate colors of the planets and I know something <laughs> yeah. awesome is coming I, I know I need you guys I need you guys to, to uh, fact check me in fact I'm gonna need you guys to help me fact check with our giveaway that we're gonna do Ooh. and we can start doing that right now if you would like let's go for it okay so what we me and Pamela had talked about earlier is sort of doing a, a experimental very grassroots outreach where we would see if we could bring in some uh, other hashtags to get people aware that this hangout is happening. So there's a hashtag, which is science facts. Is that correct, Pamela? Yep, science okay. facts. So we want to use the hashtag on Twitter. And that's the other thing I wanted to ask you guys. Where are you getting more comments? Because I don't want to alienate people that have tuned in. I've got a bunch of stuff to give away. So so, so we can follow on all the... Uh, on everything? YouTube, Google+, please don't use Facebook. That one will confuse us. Okay. YouTube, Google+, and um, Twitter. But you have okay. to use the hashtag or we won't find you. Yeah. Okay. Science so we're going to use. Do you want to use the CosmoQuest Hangout? What, what uh, is that let's hashtag? Use, let's let's give them a. The Hangout a thon? In Science Facts. Say that again. You broke. You cut Sorry. Out to CQX. So hashtag CQX for CosmoQuest. Okay. And CQX. hashtag Science Facts. And hashtag science facts. You guys got that out there in the world? So what I'm going to do is I've got a whole bunch of stuff to give away, so I'm just going to grab the first thing. Or wait, you know what? We can give away the super fancy Swarovski Crystal Big Dipper, which is a $48 value in real life. Um, if we can, so we need someone to tweet an interesting fact about the Big Dipper. So it could be anything about the Big Dipper, and then Pamela and Nicole are going to pick the one that they think is the most interesting. And you're either going to contact me, the winner's going to contact me either through email, or if you are on Twitter, then I can follow you back, and you can DM me your address. So you need to just tweet or send in a comment, anything at all about the Big Dipper that you can tell us that's a fact about it. How far away are the stars? Which is the brightest star and why? Anything about that would be cool. So if anyone does that, you can let me know. And then you will win a necklace. I'm, I'm about to start tracking it. I put it into the comment tracker, but they... Yeah, you guys will have to help me because I'm not, I'm not that fast on all this tech stuff. Let's see if I can... <laughs> and apparently if I type, it gets loud. So. Oh, yes. I know that problem well. <laughs> so and and I just want to thank Dan Bryce. He says that he's been marking a clown as spam. Um, There's nothing we can do about banning. That. Yeah. So if you can mark them as abuse, hopefully someone is there. If there's anyone at Google watching, if you can help us figure out how to get rid of the troll we've acquired, we'd really appreciate it. Um, so Nancy Graz is asking, have you done Gemini? The constellation Gemini. Yeah. I have not, but I have it mapped out. So I've gone all. I've gone and I've looked through all the different constellations, and I want to do. I want to do all the. You know, the ones that people their astrology signs. You know, I want. I want to do that. And so I, I have made these. The way I do it is I get this. Like I take the constellation and I shrink it down onto a piece of paper so that it's about the right size of one of the pieces that I'm doing, and I roll the clay out, and then I take this rubber tooled sort of pencil. Well, first I have to make like little holes in the paper, and then what I'll do is I'll I'll poke right where the stars are. So I'm trying to be really as accurate as I can about mapping it. So I'll shrink it down, and then I'll I'll put little dots in here. And I even try to do the size of the stars. Like if you can see yeah. this at all, there's one of the stars are smaller. So oh my gosh. Yeah, I try to do it as accurately as possible. So then I do that. I poke the little holes in it, and then I, it dries, and then I fire it in a kiln. And then it's called bisque fired at that point. So it's like been dried out. And so then I will paint it. And then I leave little spaces where the crystals are going to be embedded. And those are those indentations. And so then it gets painted to look like space. Ooh, I love and that. that then, look. And then when it comes out and it's dry again, and I mean cool again out of the kiln, then I embed the crystals in it. And those are the stars. 
facts? Uh, do we have any facts about this? So, so yeah, so if you can tweet or Google Plus, hashtag science facts <laughs> and hashtag CQX. Um, I have it at the bottom of our screen right now if you're watching on video uh, under the donate link. Uh, and if you're listening, that's hashtag science facts, <laughs> hashtag CQX, add that to your post, uh, and give us a fact about the Big Dipper. I'm we'll not seeing any facts yet. There are some very awesome, awesome facts about the Big Dipper. And if you can guess the fact I'm thinking of that's come <laughs> up in our virtual star party, um, we will send a poster to Amy to send to you, or we'll just send a poster to you, one of our AstroCast posters. And if you can't get on Twitter, if you just want to leave a comment at the Hangout, on the little bottom feed of the yeah. Hangout. Or even on YouTube, if you're, if you, the YouTube comment, because we will see those as well. So I can think of another one. Up. I don't think it's the same thing you're thinking of. Do but I need to do an know. easier one, like a tweet, a fact about the moons of Jupiter or Jupiter? I have that. We can stick with that one. Yeah. I also have this one. It's Jupiter. S-A-C-T-S. Did I spell it wrong? <laughs> I, I love how offering free stuff uh -huh. kills our comment tracker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, there it goes. Free. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And all they all come the in things. at once. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Uh, let's see. So you can read some of them off if they're accurate or funny. Okay. Wow. Okay. Twelve <laughs> all at once on Twitter. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, e, here's one from Lone Three Wolf. I hope you're <laughs> referencing the T-shirt and your name. <laughs> um, easy one. The Big Dipper is a seven-star asterism from the much larger constellation of Ursa Major. Uh, oh, Julio Mendez says the Big Dipper isn't a constellation. It's actually an asterism and part of Ursa Major. So you guys are sharing a brain. <laughs> um, fun fact from Jeremy Lusk. The stars Mizar and Alcor are a visual binary if you have good eyes. But we've recently learned that Mizar is a quadruple system and Alcar Alcor is a binary. So there are six stars in total. And that's my fact, so you get the t-shirt. That's what I was thinking! <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we were thinking of the same one. Good job, Jeremy. <laughs> Is that who wins the necklace or the T-shirt? I'm confused now. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. We're gonna we're we're gonna send a poster to the person who comes up with the the same fun fact we thought of. So let's oh, see okay. if someone has a fun fact that's better than that that we haven't thought of. So Jeremy, you get a poster. Uh, Jeremy Lusk. Um, that's on YouTube. So. Okay, Jeremy, email info at cosmoquest. No, oh. cosmoquestx at gmail.com. Okay. <laughs> that one was, is getting checked by several people. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Info at see forwards what? to cosmoquestx. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one of the emails. We have All the them. emails. All right, so there are some on Twitter now. Somebody just said that they sent them to Twitter. Okay. So, um, Helio, so Mizar. <laughs> I love how it's just a word with a question mark. Um, so when you look at the Big Dipper, let me see if I can pull up a picture of the Big Dipper over here. Um, we, so when you look at the Big Dipper, it goes star, star, star for the three star handle. And the second star in on the handle is called Mizar. But if you look at it and you have better vision than I have, and this has actually been used as a test for elite guards in various militaries throughout the millennia, um, if you have very good eyes, you can separate Mizar into two stars, Mizar and Alcor. And then if you have really big telescopes and you use spectroscopy as well, you can start breaking those up into additional stars. So that one star is actually two stars if you have good eyes, is actually six stars if you use telescopes. And I love being able to say that one star is really six stars. That's awesome. There you go. Uh, we've got a couple more. So Jeff Setzer uh, said all the stars in the Big Dipper are actually at different distances from Earth. Um, yeah. Uh, Nancy Graz says, in 50,000 years, the Big Dipper will change shape, uh, as seen from Earth, and it might resemble a big iron. That's cool. I know that. No, neither I know, did I. I. Yeah, because uh, the stars are, of course, at different distances and moving differently. 
uh, at different speeds. And so the constellations over time, over long periods of time, will seem to warp and change. Um, and into, so a, into an iron? A big iron. Like you iron like clothes? A clothes iron? That's what I'm, I'm assuming thinking. it's a clothing iron. That's what I'm thinking. That thing I never use. <laughs> Um, oh, from John Boise, from right across the river. Um, Japanese name for Micron Alzar. Oh, no. <laughs> Jomuboshi? Jomuboshi. If you can't see both, you'll die before the year's end. <laughs> Sucks to have bad vision, Pamela. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently we're both dying before the year's over. Oh. Um. So there you go. There's a few more science facts from the Twitters. Yeah, they're not coming in the comment tracker. We're, we need to track those separately. Okay, so, well, why don't you guys pick one that you like for that? Because we've got a bunch of them we can. So, what's do what's your favorite of the fun facts? Oh, mine might have to be the big iron. Yeah, I'm thinking big iron too. Big so, iron? big iron, you get a okay. circle. You yes. just want a big yes. dipper. So, where did that come in on? Was that on Twitter or that was, was that on, on Twitter from Nancy okay. Graz? Um, it's like a silver circle with a copper triangle of the avatar so <laughs> I for some reason I'm not seeing it so can you tweet at me I'm at Surly Amy Your her name's Nancy yeah so you Nancy tweet Grass. at me and just say okay Nancy Grass I just saw you retweeted it okay Nancy I'm gonna follow you let's see I'm gonna follow you so you can follow me back and then DM me your address your shipping address and I will send this out to you this coming week do you so, get a sparkly surly? You get a sparkle surly, which is sparkle super surly. fancy. I'm going to tweet at you right now. Congrats. All right. So now you can find me. Sweet. Okay, this is going to work great. Okay, Nicole, you can retweet them, and that will help me a lot. There you go. Okay, so we can do another one. How about we can give this one away next? This piece was inspired by the exploration of Mars. Oh, and that's says awesome. Curiosity on it. And anyone so want to Mars tell me why it says Curiosity? Yeah. Curi yeah. I love right. the font you use on that. That's oh. so cute. Is that your handwriting? Or is that yeah, I, I, just, I just wrote that. No. That's yeah, that's all that's I make molds of things. Yeah, that would be it's too hard to make the lettering that perfect. I do do some where I, I hand draw on them, but they look more sort of like tattoo designs and stuff. But if I need to recreate a logo or do something really specific, I will make a mold. But anyway, so now if someone can tweet a fact about the Curiosity Rover, then you can win a Curiosity Surly Remix. So yeah, use the hashtag CQS the hacks, yeah. and science facts. Yeah. Uh, or use the YouTube comments, um, and yeah, we'll we'll pick our favorite curiosity fact for that. Um, so we can touch a little bit on uh, how this jewelry works, sort of as very grassroots outreach. Uh, the the idea, you know, is very simple. People, I get people to you know wear my art, and 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 then also it sort of started out where. At the time when I was making jewelry, in the very beginning, it was very fashionable and trendy to wear a necklace that said something like princess or daddy's little angel or your name. And I thought that was just crap. And so I thought that there's much more interesting things that you could wear around your neck. So I started putting words like think, like the one that Pamela got. And this is a good example sort of that of curiosity. And so people will see that on you and they'll come up to you and they'll ask you what it means. Or if it's something a little bit more sciencey, like here's another good example, uh, uh, like Darwin's, it's a reproduction of Darwin's drawing the phylogenetic tree. So when he was working on origin of species, he had a little sketch that he did and he sort of sketched out how he thought species may have evolved. And he did this little drawing that says, I think, and then it has the little sketch on it. And it ended up being actually pretty close to how you know they determined that things did evolve. And it was a lovely moment of where art and science sort of intersected. And it's something like this that I like to highlight. And it's also just a really interesting sort of organic shape. And so it's something that you can wear around your neck and it doesn't scream out, I'm you know, super into science, but it's it's an interesting shape and it can and people will be drawn into it and they'll they'll come up to you and they'll ask you 
you know, what, what is that? Is that a tree? Is that a bush? Is that a person? What is that little drawing there? And that gives the person that's wearing the jewelry an opportunity to share a little bit of science with whoever they encounter. So it's a, it's a very, very grassroots way of, of sharing science with the general public. And that's really, really the basis of, of this art project that I do. So right now, we'll give away this curiosity one. And then people can walk up to you and ask you what you're curious about <laughs> and ask you what planet that is, and you can say that's Mars. So we're looking for facts about Mars. I'm still facts. seeing Big Dipper yeah, facts the Big coming Dipper in. Ones are still coming in, and they're really awesome. Oh. <laughs> oh, we can pick extras. I don't know how much time we're actually going to have. I have a lot that's of fine. necklaces that I can give out. So. Um, I would point out a comment from, from Guido Vibra. Usually here in Germany, jewelry is mostly associated with astrology, so Amy's work is doubly important here. Oh. Yeah, we have the same thing here in the United yeah. States, and and everything Amy said uh, about it being a talking point, I, I fly a lot. Anyone who follows my Twitter stream knows I do insane things, like Thursday I went to LA for one day. Um, stewardesses mm -hmm. are constantly commenting on the jewelry, and I love it because you can go through the metal detectors without yeah, taking your jewelry say. off. Yeah. And so say. Surly Amy Jewelry, <laughs> Surly Ramex is TSA totally approved. TSA approved jewelry. TSA approved. And, and I've never had them flip it though. For me, a couple of times I've gone through and they've flipped it. Like, I'm not sure what I would have underneath. But other than that, you're totally Tape a razor blade to the back? I don't know. That would set, I think that would set off the alarm, but I don't know. But yeah, it is uh, TSA approved. But speaking of a, a stro astrology, this is a, a new design that I've been doing, which is the symbols of the planets, but this is what NASA uses, and I yeah. got it off their website. So it's like the actual symbols of the planets, but it will appeal to the astrology crowd, but you actually can say, no, science. <laughs> and, and I love the fact that you did not include Pluto on that one, because Pluto's and symbol is a P and an L, yeah, which every, stands for every. Percival Lowell and Pluto. Every time I post or I show this design, I get a slew of messages from people that are so upset that Pluto isn't represented. I don't understand what people are going to get over this. Pluto they're not. Pluto but hasn't gone anywhere. Pluto's still a rock out there. It's okay. You need, you need a separate series for the um, for the, the minor planets, I think. Yeah, yeah. Pluto, yeah, Ceres. I don't know. I think the moons, I mean, some of the moons that are out there are just so much yeah. more interesting oh, to me than Pluto. Io. Yeah. yeah. There's just so many, there's so many amazing things happening. Water and, you know, there could be life underneath the surface of certain On moons. Europa, yeah, yes. Europa may have life. and. I love yeah. Europa. That's it's it's really cool. So the whole Pluto thing, you guys, come on, let it go. Yeah, and, and when flight attendants are commenting <laughs> on our jewelry, they're commenting on our hair color. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and and it's you know I have to say one of the two highest forms of compliment that I've gotten. Um, getting jewelry compliments from stewardesses because they see people all the time. They see everything. Um, what was I saying? Flight attendants, not stewardesses. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> flight attendants. Yes, thank you for the the correction. Um, and uh, it, we we love the dudes too. Well, yeah, but the dudes have never complimented my jewelry, oh. so I think I had it right this time. I compliment my hair. Okay. <laughs> um, but but the other big complimenters are when you get your shoes complimented by the people who run the X-ray machines because they see every pair oh. of shoes ever made. So those are the two important sets of compliments. And, and Surly, Amy, your jewelry gets the airline flight attendant vote of approval apparently, over and over. Uh, according to John Boise, they've, uh, apparently the, his Surly's look funny on the backscatter x-ray, and so that's why they turn it they over. They poke at it. Oh. <laughs> okay. They poke at it. They, yeah, they make me flip my Surly, which is a, a term that we use for when you get really excited, whatever flips your Surly. <laughs> Right, we have a couple of curiosity comments. Uh, curiosity. I just retweeted one. Yeah, I, I oh. retweeted one. Like, if this is true, I like it. I don't know if it's true. Can you read I, it out? Curiosity was named by a sixth grader from Lenexa, yeah. Kansas, through a 2008 contest. That's entirely true. Is that true? I like That's, that one. That I one's want, awesome. I want Thank that one to win. Curiosity's design will serve as the basis for the planned unnamed 2020 Mars rover mission. Um, 
that's from Janelle Duncan. And then Helio de George says, Images from the rovers reveal that the Martian sky has reverse scattering of sunlight. So the region near the sun is blue and the rest of the sky is more red. This is due to selective scattering. So that's another okay. fact, Mars rover fact. Um, and uh, somebody wants to know if you voted in the 2006 IAU Pluto. No, I, I only became an IAU member in the last general session, which was actually a year ago this August. So I'm a baby IAU member. But for the field of astronomy, um, the way the IAU works is once you're accepted as a member into the IAU, it's for life. And the country you're living in when you get accepted to be a member is stuck paying your dues. I don't personally pay to be a member of the IAU. The U.S. pays for me to be a uh, member of the IAU. Um, and, and so they only give membership to people they're pretty sure are in it for the long haul. And so to get into the IAU at, at my age um, was kind of awesome. I was a little baby grad student watching the whole thing. Hilariously. So it it was the US. topic of Fraser and I's very first astronomy cast. <laughs> it it was happening that week and we decided this is what we're gonna that's what we're gonna start our show off with. So we've got a couple more facts on Twitter. Uh, Curiosity is nuclear powered. Uh, Clara T. Ma named Curiosity. Um, and the pattern of Curiosity's tire treads is Morse code for JPL. That one. So that one's from Peter. Uh, and <laughs> so there's a couple more. Michael Curiosity Uberty facts. writes, Curiosity has a laser that can blast <laughs> rocks into rubble. It's That's not so much into rubble, but it can oh. blast the rocks. I love it. And it was named by a sixth grader nuclear powered and weighs 1,982, I think that's pounds. <laughs> <laughs> So. We have a lot of good ones. Do you want to pick a couple? Yeah. Okay, I will send, I can send a couple curiosities. How about I'll send, well, somebody will get the symbols of the planets. Okay. And somebody will get the curiosity. And somebody will get, let's see, these planets. Ooh. So pretty. Ooh. I like that one. So pick okay. three. I think I voted that Eric Hawk. Yep. is going to be one of my winners. So, Eric, uh, I'm going to tweet congrats at you. You need to follow me back if you don't already and DM me. And then you guys can pick other ones. And then for those people that are listening later or watching this later, we're really sorry that you didn't get to be part of the giveaway, but you can, I have been told, go to astrogear.org to buy pieces that were custom made for you guys that will go towards this fundraiser. I believe that's correct. It's, it's, so those actually go to funding the audio and video going up on YouTube. So cool. the, the donations that we're gathering through this Hangout pay for all of our citizen science over at SIUE. Anything you buy at Astrogear goes to fund all of our media production. And here's another thing that I'm going to do. If you go to my website, which is surlyramics.com, S-U-R-L-Y-R-A-M-I-C-S.com, there's a link to my shop there. If you buy anything from my shop and you put in the message to seller CosmoQuest, I will donate 50% of the proceeds to this fundraiser. So if anyone wants to go to my shop, you, you just that. have to make sure that you put CosmoQuest in the message to seller so that I know, and I will send 50% of whatever money to f help fund these guys. Because what they're That's doing is thing. extremely Thank important. You so much. Yeah, and that goes for eternity. So however long um, this you know, podcast or it's not a podcast, hang out, what are we, what are we actually, we're so many things right now, we're, we're hang YouTube. out, we're YouTube, we're everywhere, so anytime that you want to buy something from Surly Remix and you put Cosmo Quest in the message to seller, I will donate 50% of the proceeds to these guys because they have been a huge, huge in positive influence in my life and in my art and I really want to see them keep doing what they're doing. So if you feel left Thank out because you. you didn't get to win anything today, um, know that you can still get something and the money will go to a good cause. That's, thank you. Thank you. I, sure. I'm bowled over. I was halfway in the process of sending a message to, to Richard and I left him. Um, <laughs> Tell Richard so, hi. Think, he's so nice. He, I don't he know is. where he is in all of this, but he's such a great guy. 
He's he's down outside of Charlotte. He's running for Charlottesville. Yeah. He's sorry. I used to live. We used to live in the same town when I was in grad school. So yeah, <laughs> he was helping us out with production. Yeah. Um, about the tweets, I think we decided that uh, Peter B at Dragon Calf, the uh, Morse code one, is another Peter one. B. Yeah. Did you retweet it? Uh, I can do that. Yeah, you retweet it so I can follow that person. Retweet. I think I've okay. actually met Peter at Dragon Con. Oh wait. Here. Yeah, I think okay. so too. Okay. Um, I'm following. There we go. Peter, right he on has Peter. A fabulous tattoo, I believe, on his calf. Yeah. Hence dragon. That would be why his <laughs> duh. Uh, we have a okay. question for Amy from Andrew Doubleton. Have you done the Pleiades, aka Subaru? No, but I'm more than willing to do it. If you want to yeah. get in touch with me, I love to do custom orders. And that's yes, she does. Beautiful. How I get inspired. I, I, it's like the stranger the request, the better. You know, I love it. You it like keeps the challenge. Yeah, I do. I like a challenge, and I, you know, keeps me. Like I said, I mean, this whole art project is is about me learning about science. So when somebody can come at me with an idea or something that I haven't done, that's great for me because then it gives me a chance to look into it and and learn about things while I'm making the art. You know? So I love it. So yeah, feel free anyone to get in touch with me at Surly Amy on Twitter, or you can get in touch with me at info at surlyramics.com. And we are gonna uh, we're gonna be rooming together at Convergence oh, in yeah. Minneapolis. Right. We should plug that event, right? <laughs> so coming up at Convergence, which is this really great sci-fi event, it's sort of like a, a, a more intimate Dragon Con. It's really yes. great. It happens every year, and it's a whole lot of fun. And the blog that I write for, Skeptic organizes a science track there. So we bring in a lot of different sciences from different fields and we have a whole track with panels and, and discussions and workshops. And I head up a couple of the art and science workshops where we do, uh, one of the, the workshops that we usually do there that I'll be involved in is where we compare the art making process to the scientific method. So we show how the way scientists come up with hypotheses and how they analyze data and how you know they create things is very similar to the way artists do their art making process. And so you show up and you get a bag of mystery materials, which is sort of your data, your available data. You have to come up with a hypothesis as to what you can make with that art. And, and then you create something, and then it's peer-reviewed by the, the group of artists in the room. And, you know, then you, so you have to present, and then it goes around in a circle again, and it sort of shows you how, uh, you know, we are very similar, even though people say we're so different. And it sort of breaks down the stereotype also that artists are supposed to be hippy-dippy airheads. And, you know, it also shows that scientists are very creative. So that's one of the panels. Are to be airheads too. It's okay. Yeah. We all get that. We will well, demonstrate we said, that multiple times we, during this hangout, I'm sure. After about 24 hours of no sleep, yes. I think that we are all hippie to be airheads. But, <laughs> so uh, is this we, workshop open to all levels of experience? Yeah, in like, fact, yeah, any figures. <laughs> yeah, and that actually makes it more fun cuz I don't even know what the materials are yet cuz I usually get, like gather some very strange things together and ship them to Minnesota. So I don't even usually know what they are and then we put stuff in a bag and then everyone that comes into that workshop gets a bag and they and during the panel we discuss, you know, the the ways that art and science are similar or a little interesting things about what scientists, you know, did art, you know, like Feynman played the bongo drums and things like that. And we, you know, have a discussion. During that time, everyone makes art. So everyone is welcome. And that's just an example of one of the panels that I'm involved with. There's a lot more higher science stuff that happens with, you know, a lot of real scientists. And we talk about climate change and a whole bunch of other topics that I, I haven't looked at the schedule, but every year it's, it's very fascinating. And I'm lucky to have Nicole as my roommate. Thank you for, for yeah. helping me out. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. You're I'm really, I'm really bad at keeping up with things. So the fact that you already had a reservation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're a little too spunky for me. I'll have to try to keep up. You know, well, I'm getting old, but I'm gonna try to keep oh. up. With Nicole. <laughs> well, yeah, and this is my first time. I tried to come the last two years, but I had to be out of the country for various reasons. <laughs> so this is my first time coming to Convergence. Well, Convergence yeah. is great. And the skeptic, the skeptic track mm -hmm. sort of thing that happens is really fun. But one of the interesting things that uh, Convergence does is they have a party floor. So there's like the second level of the hotel, and every single group that has gotten a party room decorates their their room. Balconies out yeah, over the big open space. 
yeah, and there's all these different themes, you know, so we always do some sort of weird science-y theme in our room, and we share a room. It's usually next to the free thought bloggers have a room, and then there's, like, usually a zombie room, and there's, like, strange dance rooms, and there'll be, like, a video game room where you can go and play video games on giant screens. I mean, there's, like, so many things happening, and they have these party rooms every night of the convention. So, like I said, it's hard to keep up, if you're me, to keep up with the youngins, but I think that Nicole's going to have a really great time. Uh, out there checking out all the rooms. But yeah, it, yeah. I, I've gotten to go and be part of the Skeptic group a couple of different times as an honorary uh, interloper. And yeah. um, it's, it's, a, it's the most um, intimate conference, I guess is the right way to put it, because yeah. it does have everyone out surrounding this indoor uh, plaza where there's people outside doing uh, Nerf quarterstaff fighting and dancing and then all of the room parties around it and it's just a really great environment to be in and I know Nicole's going to be taking CosmoQuest with her and yeah. uh, doing some presentations on all of the science that's coming out of here. Yeah, I'm doing a hands-on science workshop for kids and kids of all ages, so kids and adults. Um, and then I'm on a bunch of science panels, Ask a Scientist, uh, Science of British Sci-Fi. I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, so yeah, yeah the theme this year is, is the British Invasion, so I think we're going to see a lot of Doctor Who type stuff, but that event is happening uh, July 4th through the 7th, I believe, mm -hmm. or, yep. yeah, in, in Minneapolis, or in Bloomington, in Minnesota, so, uh, mm -hmm. if you're, I'm in, not in that it. kind of a doctor shirt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just bring my sonic. I, I had my sonic screwdriver with me at my defense last year. And when I met Nicole, she was dressed as a doctor. Was I? Yeah. No, I was. Um, I was Rose. Oh, right. Tim was the yes. doctor. I was Rose. Yes. yes. I had the blonde wig. <laughs> so yeah, this this is actually one of the important missions for CosmoQuest is we recognize that it's really easy to spend all of our time talking to the same audiences and, and I'm sure you've been there as well Amy where it seems like you're always seeing the same people at the cons you're always seeing the same people when you do your art well for us what it what it is is it's really easy to always see the same scientists always easy to see the same amateur astronomers and to try and bring new people into our community of CosmoQuest to introduce new people to the fact that they can do citizen science um, that can get challenging and so one of the ways we have found to go out and identify new audiences is to go to these science fiction conventions where people have this interest in imagining how we can explore our universe teach them the real science behind the science fiction and get them engaged in doing what we do and um, so when you support CosmoQuest you support us um, teaching stormtroopers how to do science better so that maybe they can survive next time someone shoots a gun at them and they don't understand kinematics. <laughs> if, you, if you fight for that side. <laughs> hey, come to the dark side. We've got cookies. Yeah, uh, I so think yeah, that the, the sci-fi the, the sci events are just a really, really great place for any of us that are trying to encourage critical thinking or encourage science. Um, it's just, it's a wonder, it's a wonderful space where there's people of all ages that, like you said, are already sort of interested in science, they just might not realize it. There's another event coming up in Seattle called Geek Girl Con that I know Nicole's going to be a part of too. And I'm really looking forward to that because I heard that she has some sort of a edible solar system that I can get involved all in or something. Of, <laughs> yes, edible solar system and some other edible astronomical objects. Uh, yeah. I'm doing a little workshop on that. So and I said, we'll I'm going to help by eating. <laughs> we're going to be doing uh, geology of Oreo cookies later on during this hangout and also making cake pops that look like planets. I, I love it. For the first time last weekend, it was awesome. She loved That's it. That's fantastic. So uh, speaking of, of art and space, I don't know if you saw this while we were previewing it, Surly, but um, I know your name's Amy, but Surly always goes in <laughs> I, front of it in my I, head. I answer to that. That's totally fine. I answer to Noisy. She calls me that yeah. too. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. I, I, people are their Twitter handles. So um, Courtney Hogan made this fabulous shirt. It used to be a plain black long sleeve t-shirt. And we're going to be teaching you how to make this. And Richard was here. He was just in here. Yeah, he was just here for just a sec. 
Okay. I'm, I'm closing my out. window right now, so if there's a weird noise. Sorry. Okay. Um, right. Somebody asked if this is convergence-con.org that we're talking about just now. That is the website for Convergence. Yes. yes. Uh, it's a, good it's a really great event. It's such a fun fun space, really positive people there. I, I, I've always had a great time. This will be, I think, my fifth year going. Sweet. But I really... And it's very affordable, too. I think it's only like $100 to get in for two days. So and the Sofitel Hotel that's across the street... Has the is, most comfortable beds ever. Is that what you're yeah. going to say? <laughs> and the best breakfast oatmeal ever. There's just something when you're absolutely exhausted from being up way too late, talking geek. Um, just a good bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> we are such old people. What happened, Pamela? I'm like, the beds are so comfortable. And I was like, the oatmeal is really great. What, what is happening? Oh we still gosh. got a lot of good years in us, Pamela. Come on. Oh <laughs> she meant the drinks at the bar were really good. Is what she meant. <laughs> oatmeal stout. That's what she meant. Yeah, she was talking about the beer. Yeah, <laughs> Um, oh, Richard's confused. Hold on. Working to help him. Okay, Richard, if you're watching and you can hear, I'm going to type this too. Um, you need to follow link from Nicole to come into the main event. I didn't send him a link. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, did you invite him into the Hangout? I did, yes. I, yeah, I, I invited sends, him. That sends the link in okay. the Hangout. Okay. Yeah, I've just invited you back to the Hangout. There you are. Yay. I see a little icon of him. So, There's oh, there a Richard. Is. Okay, so Richard is, his audio is now looping so that we can see the audio from, not see the audio, so that we can hear the audio from <laughs> Courtney. That's not until later when you're really tired, then you're seeing the audio. <laughs> see audio. <laughs> smell so, the so Richard's going to share our video from Courtney on how to get started making your own. Does um, that mean I'm out of here, you guys? Yeah. Oh, can I say goodbye really quick? Yes. Yeah. Please. I feel like we didn't get to give enough stuff away, and that makes me a little bit sad. We can invite so, you back later. Um. Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back, but I, just really quick. So, like, the next five people that want to tweet at Surly Amy, just hello or something nice. You have to say something nice and not be a troll. But if you tweet at me uh, something about CosmoQuest, the next five people, I will send you a free necklace. So Thank whoever gets there first, at Surly Amy. And then I just wanted to end with a little quote, okay, when Professor Brian Cox was speaking about the news about finding the Higgs boson, he said, this is pure curiosity-driven exploration happening before our eyes. And that joyful exploration of the natural world and how we see it is a perfect example of how artists and scientists share similar passions. So everybody go out there, work together, learn about science, make art. And thank you guys so much for having me on your show. You're both wonderful people and all the people that work for you are really great. And you guys go donate to these people. Please donate. Let's keep this thank project you, Amy. going. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for having me. We'll see I will, you soon. I'll see you. Bye. 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 Oh, and someone's asked.